Hi, and welcome to part two of the Hive's PCB design with KiCad tutorial series. My name is Ben, and in this video, I'll be going over how PCB design software is structured and describe a, the basic design flow that you might follow to go from an idea to a ready to fab board. Let's get started. PCBs are designed with specially developed computer-aided design software, known equivalently as ECAD, PCBCAD, or EDA for electronic design automation. Many different software application and suites exist uh, that can perform these required functions for this process, and all of them have different strengths and weaknesses. However, the jargon and processes are generally very similar, meaning if you learn one, you have the tools to learn the other with relative ease. It's often just a matter of discovering the new locations of the necessary icons and settings. The understanding of layers and how layers are represented on the screen versus their physical manifestation is critical. Place your components or objects or polygons onto the wrong layer and you'll be very sad later and probably a little bit less wealthy. PCBCAD software uses two primary views, uh, the schematic and the layout which can also be called the PCB view. The schematic is for the circuit diagram, what might be drawn on paper with symbols and lines for connections. The layout is the physical design of the board in layers, the size and placement of components, the actual location of routes, and the mechanical constraints. These views are inextricably linked, so changes in one will automatically be or pseudo-automatically be reflected in the other. It's very important to recognize the layout will often look nothing like the schematic, and that's completely okay, because schematics are for people to read and understand, whereas layouts are for electrons to understand. These two views do not have the same goals and therefore often will not look the same. So let's talk about layers. As I mentioned before, layers are a critical component to PCB design software. Each layer in the software will describe a physical layer within the actual manufactured stack up, such as copper or silkscreen, or as an informational layer for the designer to add information for themselves or the fabrication house, such as dimensions, part names, project revisions, and more. These layers are similar to other graphical design tools like Photoshop or Illustrator, but they generally don't have prioritization. Overlapping polygons on different layers is typically acceptable, although not always. And by acceptable, I mean the software will allow you to do it, but it may complain later during your design rule checks, which we'll talk about much later on. There are numerous layers that you will need to become familiar with, though there are often many more within a given software package that are either left unused or you will not interact with. The most commonly used ones uh, for you include those for copper, both the front and the back, the silk screen layers, and the board's outline. Less used will include those for solder glue, paste, and mask, as well as part outlines and part names. The layers here are given for, uh, layer names here are given for KiCad, whereas other software will likely use a different naming convention. So Google is definitely your friend here. Speaking about parts, similar to how there are two views for the entire PCB, each part or component that is included in your design, even the non-electrical ones, will have at least two models, a symbol for the schematic and a footprint for the layer, for the, uh, sorry, for the layout. They may also have 3D CAD models as well for 3D view or for exporting to mechanical design or simulation software. Symbols are the schematic representation of a part. Think the squiggle of a resistor or the parallel line of a parallel lines of a capacitor with pins to define the symbolic connection points. Footprints are the physical shape of the device, including the body, through holes or service mounted pads and are digital representations of the components package. The connection points for footprints are known as pads, even when they are through holes. Some software requires you to link a symbol and a footprint together into a single combined model called the device. All of these uh, files are going to be stored in um, larger collections called libraries. KiCad does not use devices. It's a critical difference between KiCad and other softwares. 
What this means is that any symbol may be associated with any footprint. This allows you a lot of flexibility. You don't need to have a thousand different devices for resistors alone, and you can use the same footprint for many symbols very easily. But it does also open the door for designers to accidentally select the wrong package and requires careful alignment of the symbol's pins with the footprint's pads. So be careful to select the correct footprint. We'll actually intentionally run into this problem later, so keep it in the back of your head. KiCad and most other EDA software has, have many built-in libraries that can and often should be used for standard parts, such as passives, diodes, or transistors. Integrated circuits, ICs, and other non-standardized components may not be as generic and therefore may not be built into the software. One advantage of separating the symbols and footprints is that a part may have a standard symbol or footprint, but may, may, maybe not both. In KiCad, that's easily handled, but in device-based software, it would be more challenging and would require generally creating the other half of the device model before you could actually use it. In general, you should not be creating your own models. That's a last resort because it's tedious, time-consuming, and prone to error. There are dedicated companies out there that will create electrical models for free for you. Use these services instead to reduce the amount of busy work you'll have to do. But we'll actually go through both methods later anyway. Lastly, there are two sets of design rules that your uh, board must adhere to to be fabricated successfully. The first are the electrical rules that apply to the schematic, things like whether the wire, wires are connected and if the pin types match. These are typically fixed uh, and don't need adjusting. The second are design rules that apply to the layout, such as hole sizes, copper separation distances, and these come from your chosen fabrication house and design requirements. Any ECAD software will be able to check your design against the electrical rules, called the, an ERC, and the specified design rules, called a DRC, for design rule check or electrical rule check, respectively. It's super important to make sure that your design rules are correct by reading your fab house's instructions carefully and to run these checks multiple times throughout your design iterations to avoid error propagation and incompatible or non-functional designs. So why KiCad? KiCad, as I mentioned, uh, is one of such of these software suites that can make circuit boards. It has a number of advantages that I think make it a good tool for learning this process, um, though, there are some downsides. There's a relatively low barrier to entry, uh, making it, and they're uh, relative to the industry titans, making it good for introducing concepts without all of the extra overhead. It's also free and open source, meaning you can use it even if you're not with a large company. There is a large and active uh, community of support and development, which also includes cross-platform operation. Additionally, there's no cloud storage to lock your designs into. Of course, the lack of a big company support may be detrimental for certain reasons, however, uh, such as missing external integrations and advanced functionality, and it can be a little bit more rough around the edges due to the lack of a dedicated development and development team. Uh, this missing functionality and more, however, can be added through the use of custom uh, plugins and modules which are written in standard Python. Um, KiCad has a few program-wide shortcuts that are good to know about before we get into it. Um, like most CAD software, a three-button mouse is highly advantageous, with the scroll wheel being used for both zooming and panning. The insert key will typically repeat the last command, which is useful for things like placing multiple parts or um, setting values for multiple parts. And most text inputs will handle mathematical expressions and unit conversions, which is very useful because metric and imperial units are rampant in PCB design. Finally, there are many shortcuts, most, of not, most if not all of which are customizable. And if you hit Control and F1, you will see all of the available hotkeys, which is pretty useful. Finally, while designing any board has its own special requirements and every tool has its own quirks, PCB design broadly, broadly follows the following sequence. First, you conceptualize and ideate your circuit uh, with breadboards and simulations. Second, you select and obtain your parts, especially the crit critical components and anything that's either specific to the design or difficult to get. 
Third, you would create your libraries and set up your project, including determining a fab house and locating their design rules and requirements. Fourth, you create the schematic with symbols, wires, footprints, and your ERC to using an iterative process to finalize your design into something cohesive and coherent. Fifth, you would lay it out, spending the majority of your time on placing components, then routing and finally adding any finishing touches while running your DRC liberally and frequently to avoid any last minute major errors. And lastly, sixth, once you've iterated enough and satisfied your design requirements and get a clean bill of health from both the ERC and DRC, you would plot the required Gerber and assembly files and send them off to fabrication. Of course, there's more after that, like waiting, testing, debugging, more iteration, and programming, but that's generally what it takes to go from an idea to an actual board. And with that, we close the book on part two. In this video, we covered EDA software and how it works with a lot more terminology, introduced KiCad, and gave a broad PCB design flow that we'll look to follow through in the coming videos. A PDF of this video is available as well, linked in the description and hosted on the Hives Wiki. In part three, the next video, we'll start that process with an introduction to the circuit we'll be developing into a PCB. No electrical engineering knowledge is required, and we'll start going through or and complete going through the process of part selection. I'll see you there.